welcome to the screen, Ben De La Creme. Oh my gosh, thank you. Thank you guys, thank you. Stop, it's too much. Stop it, stop, it's too much. I'll have to leave, I'll be too embarrassed. Oh, so, just kidding, I can't go anywhere. Hi everyone, my name is Ben De La Creme and I am a uh, beautiful woman for a living. I am so excited to be here uh, with AV Club uh, to do some numbers from my past solo shows. So, I uh, would like to just go ahead and uh, introduce this first number. Now, I will be doing numbers from three of my past solo shows. The first one uh, is from a show called Cosmos, Space, Time, Splash of Crayon. And that show is all about uh, science and like outer space and uh, how through science we can understand outer space or whatever. If I am going to introduce you to the cosmos at large, we're going to need to go on a little bit of a journey but we're quarantined. So this is going to be a journey of the imagination. Yes, the imagination is the best spaceship, uh, the most high-tech spaceship that one can uh, journey in. See, bloop, 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 bloop. there it is. And uh, I will now be answering questions that have plagued nerds throughout the centuries. Questions like, what's planets? Who's some other planets? How did science? And etc. So here we go. Let's blast off to outer space. You guys ready? Here we go. Oh my God, here we go. You guys, that's the sound of a spaceship taking off. Oh my gosh, can you guys believe the production value? And we're ready. We're ready, you guys. Welcome to outer space. I'm so glad that, look at that. Look at that. Oh my gosh, can you guys believe it? It's just like, oh my gosh. There, That's turbulence in the spaceship. Okay, so here we are. And I am now going to give you a little tour of the planets, all right? So uh, I don't know if you guys know much about this, but uh, if you look over this way, you're going to be able to see the planet Mercury. Yes, it's fun, right? Okay, and if you look over that way, you're going to be able to see the planet Pluto. Sorry, uh, Pluto does not identify as a planet anymore. My apologies. But if you look over this way, you're going to be able to see the planet Uranus. If you look to your rear, you'll be able to see the planet Uranus. Right behind you is Uranus. Oh, I'm sorry, guys, I can't do it. I, uh, I know that when a certain type of lady goes to outer space, she's expected to do a certain type of joke about a certain planet with a certain name. But, you know, I'm really just not that kind of a girl. You know, I knew this point would come along. Some science talk comes out all wrong And making crude jokes of the heavens isn't right For instance, certain planets having certain names That sound like other things impolite You see, we must approach Uranus reverently And I'll only touch upon Uranus gently I'll never tell a joke about Uranus. It's far too vast to even comprehend. I won't subject the masses to talk of all its gases. I'd hate to give a whiff of anything that might offend. Now there was once a time Uranus was unknown, but nowadays most folks might say it's famous. Ever since it made its debut, well, it's barely left our view, but I'll never tell a joke about Uranus. Now let me ask you guys something. Would you say Uranus interests you as a whole? Cause if so, I'd say go ahead, explore it. <laughs> they say it's cold and desolate, but perhaps you just have to finesse a bit. I mean, it's certainly not getting any warmer if we just ignore it. Now would you say that anyone's come across Uranus lately? I'll tell you right now, no And Who could blame us? <laughs> For everyone close is astounded by that ring of debris that surrounds it, and that's why no one goes anywhere near Uranus. Uranus is full of secrets, shh, so hard to know where to begin. What kind of probe could penetrate all the mysteries that lie within, and that's why I'll never tell a joke about Uranus. We don't need that kind of smut to entertain us. To pay it disrespect leaves that bad taste you'd expect. So I'll never tell a joke about Uranus. It's 
not a thing of beauty, but what's up there is our duty. So I'll never tell a joke about Uranus. Don't let my reverence be in doubt. I hope it never gets wiped out. I'll never, I'll never ever tell a joke about Uranus. And that is all I'm going to say on the subject. Thank you so much. Now, if any of you do have any more questions about Uranus, I hear that there are pictures all over the internet. So check that out. This move has been absolutely bonkers. Uh, we moved to LA just uh, mere moments before the apocalypse began. And so uh, my partner and I have been holed up in an empty apartment with no furniture, which is really exciting. And we're moving in together for the first time. And there is no better way to figure out whether that's gonna work or not than to not be allowed out of the house. For this next number, I will be uh, doing the title track from my uh, solo show that came directly after Cosmos. And that one was called Inferno A Go Go, yes. And that one was actually based on Dante's Inferno, everybody's say, favorite topic for a, a drag program. This journey of the imagination is gonna be a little bit easier because hell is much closer to our current circumstances than outer space is. So we are going to follow in Dante's literary footsteps. And uh, let me just see, I gotta get ready. We gotta do a little costume change because it's too hot in hell. So I am now going to take you into the bowels of the earth in order to explore H-E double hockey sticks. Are you ready? Here we go. In the 14th century, in a place called Italy, Dante Alighieri wrote an allegory, and it's a scary story about the place you go when you die, how they poke you with a pitchfork, leave you to fry, at least that's what Wikipedia seems to imply. One of the most famous books that was ever written Everybody says that they read it, but they didn't So tonight we're getting academic Just kidding, we're gonna go, go Inferno and go, go So come on everybody and pull me below with me We're headed down to Hades Hottest after party Everyone's invited Degenerates all getting free We're gonna go, go Inferno and go, go so as I said, this show is called Inferno A Go Go, which means that this song is titular. Now, a lot of people would come and assume that I was gonna lip sync to Madonna or Cher, but what we actually did was explore 14th century Italian literature. Yeah, specifically, an ancient poem by a fella named Dante, which is also Italian for fully cooked yet still firm. Oh, do you guys like my hair tonight? This is my hell to pay. Thank you. Two, three, four. So I hope you all fit in a hand basket, cause that's the premier method of hell transit. Yeah, it's a rockin' beach party with no water or fun. Everybody's invited based on bad things they've done. It's a pretty safe bet. You'll know everyone. We're gonna hully gully with some demons to the law to see. With Satan's legions, come on everybody, shake those infernal regions. We're gonna go, go, inferno, a go, go. Thank you, thank you. Oh my goodness, thank you. Oh no. <gasps> Do you know what that song means? It means it's time for another costume change. Oh, thank you, there it is. Oh, you know, costume changes are so important when you're a drag queen, because they're like 70% of our skill set.
I do a ton of uh, work on the road, both as a solo artist and a director and producer, and, you know, being sort of ripped out of that live audience experience and having to figure out how to do something that translates uh, just to playing to your laptop, uh, which does not give you a whole lot to uh, work with energy-wise. But I think that all of this... Uh, you know, us being forced to find new ways to connect with audiences, uh, new ways to deliver our material, to stage our material in a way that feels um, still exciting and visceral. Uh, you know, it's a totally different medium and you have to adapt to that medium. And I actually don't think that anybody's better suited to adapt to adverse circumstances like this than uh, drag queens and queer performers because our whole history is about making something beautiful and sparkly in adverse circumstances. I mean, drag queens come from a world in which they had to uh, create something fun and sort of a, a distraction on stage for these queer audiences who weren't accepted outside of those spaces. And, and it was against all odds that uh, drag performers were able to uh, create this nurturing space. And so I think that if anything, this circumstance is going to demand that we rise to that same sort of challenge again. I think that it's really inspiring to see the different ways that different queens have been doing that. I think we're going to continue to see that. And I think that that fire that's lit under us now is going to stay with us even once the world uh, returns a little bit more to normal. This number is from my current cello show, which I was supposed to be doing on the road as we speak. However, it was, of course, I don't know if you guys have heard about, um, there's a worldwide pandemic. I hate to be the one to tell you, but that's why, anyway, I'm not doing a uh, tour or whatever, but I will be back on the road in 2021 with my show called Ready to Be Committed, which is all about, uh, it's all about relationships and marriage and, uh, you know, if I'm gonna do this next number, I should probably do a little bit more production value. So here we go. Ooh, it's another big transformation. <gasps> Can you believe it? My God, you guys. She's got everything. She's got curtains. She's got costumes, and she's got a blank white wall with an outlet in it. Thank you. Now, uh, this number, as you can tell, I love to do research. And so when I was first researching the subject of marriage, I uh, wanted to look into the history, you know. Uh, and as it turns out, marriage actually was not originally about, like, um, you know, love and whatever. It was actually all about men organizing marriage for women in order to uh, exchange land and, and gain wealth and stuff like that. I mean, it's, no, it's not very romantic, I know, but that's what medieval ladies had to deal with. Are you guys ready to have some fun? <laughs> well, too bad, because this number is educational. I know that you're probably asking yourself, uh, Fiddler Cram, seriously, all medieval ladies? Yeah, all medieval ladies. All medieval ladies, all medieval ladies, all medieval ladies, all medieval ladies, all medieval ladies. Just save your plans up, up in a tower, whiling the hours, weaving tapestries. Your dad's a feudal lord, doesn't want to go to war, so he'll hit you with enemies. You won't meet your spouse or see your new house till you unite the kingdom. So a bunch of men won't stab each other dead. By the way, you're only 13. So unite them, then they're gonna put a ring on it. If a fight, then they're gonna put a ring on it. Doesn't matter if you grab the plex tonic. Your daddy said you had to put a ring on it. Oh, 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 to the United, then they're gonna put a ring on it. Give the fight, then they're gonna put a ring on it. Doesn't matter if you grab a deep plugs, honey. Cause your daddy said you had to put a ring on it. Got cash in the fam, goats on the land. Daddy wants to keep it locked down. 
More in laws means profit loss, but there's a loophole he's found. Cause if he makes your cousin into your husband, cash stays in the family. Small gene pool meals more for you and your lumpy little inbred babies. If you're related, then they're gonna put a ring on it. Dad gave so they're gonna put a ring on it. Doesn't matter if your family tree's just a stick. Does your dad say you had to put a ring on it? Oh, 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 don't worry about the man that you prefer. You're not that kind of girl. The love that you deserve is not your concern. It's not about the chemistry, personality, just the family and the dowry. Then your destiny's locked in. You'll be wed to the kin of your dead husband once he's croaked or be betrothed to his ghost. Yeah, that was a thing. All medieval ladies, 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 give your plans up. Oh, 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 o